This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is five minutes on tech. This time, this is Intel eighth generation mobile CPUs explained because Intel has made it confusing. First thing is the staggered release. This isn't actually unusual for Intel. Sometimes they don't get all of the CPUs ready at the same time for technological reasons. It takes different time to make different CPUs in the broader generational family. But what they did do that's confusing, and I can't remember them ever doing this before, is within the mobile, that means the laptop CPUs, usually they all have the same name. Like we refer to them as KB Lake or Coffee Lake, or you know, you've heard Ivy Bridge, all going back. Well, this time we have different names. For the Intel Ultrabook CPUs, the U series CPUs, those are KB Lake R, where R stands for revision. Seventh gen was regular KB Lake, so yeah, original name there, revision. Then we have Coffee Lake, which came out the last so far, several months after the U-series CPUs came out. And those are your usual high-powered 45 watt, now six core mobile workstation slash gaming laptop CPUs. So they get a new name. And in between, last but not least, we have KB Lake G, and that's the hybrid with Intel CPUs paired quad cores paired with AMD graphics. So right there it's confusing because it used to be you'd get the hang in the lingo, you say, okay, KB Lake, I know that means seventh gen. Well, not the case anymore. Note that for the super low powered CPUs, usually used in Windows tablets, the Core M and Core Y CPUs, they go by both names, those are still in seventh generation. When, if and when Intel's going to revise those, we don't know. And what name God knows they're going to call those. Who knows? So we're going to focus on the three main CPUs. First, the U-series CPU. Those are used in Ultrabooks. U stands for Ultrabook, at least we assume. So these are 15-watt CPUs, and you'll find them, again, in Ultrabooks. Things like this, Lenovo Yoga 920, for example, thin and light laptops. And what's new here, the first core jump in years for, for Intel, you know, they haven't changed the core count really very much. So forever Ultrabook series with the dual cores. So we could differentiate between them and the 45 watt higher powered series by just saying dual core versus quad core. That's all gone away. That's part of what makes it confusing. So now these Ultrabooks with eighth gen U series, KB Lake R CPUs, these are quad cores, which is a good thing. They doubled the core count. So in terms of performance, it starts to blur boundaries too, where this can get almost to the point on some short run benchmarks as fast as those Coffee Lake 45 watt CPUs. The Coffee Lake 45 watt CPUs, well, those are what you're going to find in Generally speaking, bigger mobile workstations, gaming laptop, like this MSI Titan right here, those sort of machines. They're the most powerful of the mainstream laptop CPUs. 45 watts, so more watts equals more power. They're moving up to six cores now. So again, a nice jump in performance there. Okay, so there's a wattage difference between the two. So what's that? A little watts among friends. Well, that, it's very important actually because it, that controls how much time the CPU, say, in your Ultrabook can spend running at high clock speeds consistently. So there's the rub. If you do a short-term benchmark, like Geekbench 4 is a benchmark that runs in within 45 seconds or so, the CPU can keep up the voltage and the temperature is just fine for that short period of time. But when we do longer benchmarks, like the PC Mark 8 graphs, you can see the difference here. With Ultrabooks, it's going very spiky graph like this, because it can't keep up high clock speeds because it has to be limited by that voltage and also by the thermal considerations of being in machines this skinny. So our 45 watt CPU again, mobile workstation, gaming laptops, and a couple of daring laptops like the XPS 15 standard, not two in one. You'll see a, a graph where the core temperature stays very high and very consistent. So what that means is for anything that takes longer than 30 to 45 seconds, typically your 45 watt machine is still gonna perform a lot better. What does that mean to you? What do you need? Uh huh. What it means is that the Ultrabook, again, our poster child for the Ultrabook right here, with its four cores even running at 15 watts, might be enough for you. If you've been using Ultrabooks with 15 watt CPUs, many of them on the market, most laptops actually are these these days. It's the most common CPU that you're going to find. You found that maybe previously with the seventh generation and two cores didn't have quite enough grind. You have some GoPro footage that you're editing, something like that gets kind of sluggish. Your Photoshop filters, you could use a little more. Um, you're compiling code for class, and it kind of takes a while, but it's not horribly bad. Well, probably something with moving up to four cores is going to be plenty enough for you. A lot of people don't need more power than that. 
But if you're folks like us who do video editing five days a week, you do it professionally, you do it for work, whatever it is, you're doing 4K video, particularly even more demanding, a lot of these tasks are still more using the CPU rather than graphics. You're gonna get a big oomph there. If you're working for a big company who's you're compiling big programs, not small programs for class, we're talking millions of lines of code, you're going to want a 45 watt CPU for much faster compile times. Likewise, if you're doing any kind of 3D work, and there are still programs like ZBrush out there that use the CPU, not the graphics card, then you're going to get that nice boost. And obviously, if you're doing something like gaming, games are not so CPU dependent. There's a limit where the GPU becomes more important, especially for graphically intensive games, first person shooters, that sort of thing. So, a four core 45 watt CPU from the seventh generation is really adequate for most people for gaming. Six cores for games of the future, for future proofing, that's about it. Lastly, let's get ultra confused because HP is adding the, to that confusion, maybe in a good way. There's something else new that just came out. Intel eighth generation KB Lake G. What does G stand for? Probably graphics, I'm guessing. So this is a whole new monster here and this HP Spectre X360 15 inch is an example of it. So you've got an Intel quad core CPU plus an AMD GPU integrated together. And that AMD GPU has the power of around an NVIDIA GTX 1050. So it's pretty decent. Together that quad core CPU and the graphics get to use 65 Watts. What that tells us is because GPUs use a lot of more powerful GPUs, use a lot more watts than that, that when the GPU is active, the CPU is not getting a lot of power. So when the GPU is not super active, you've got performance that's pretty much like an Intel 7th generation Core i7-7700HQ, a quad core 45 watt CPU. That's where that's at. Now, if the GPU is being used a whole lot, you, the cores will get less juice. So they're not gonna be as powerful basically as your six core, obviously coffee lake eighth generation CPU. And they may not always be as fast as last generation 40 watt, five watt quad core, but generally they're pretty close to that. So there we go, yet another bit of confusion. So this one, why is HP particularly confusing? Because they make this with both an Ultrabook CPU option and with this new KB Lake G option. So same machine could go two different ways. That is fairly unusual. KB Lake G was designed for pretty much 15 watt, reasonably large size chassis, but still fairly thin laptops where you, you obviously couldn't put a GTX 1060 in here or something like that, something much more powerful. So it's kind of that in between. For those of you who want more oomph, but you don't need as much as a full mobile workstation, a Dell Precision, a ThinkPad P series, that sort of thing. Now, not to confuse you even more, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because very few laptops are going to have these. It's, it's kind of a specific thing. There is an Intel Core i9 that Intel has announced for mobile, for laptops. It's still 45 watt and 6 core, a lot like the Coffee Lake H45 watt CPUs we've talked about, but with higher clock speeds and it's an unlocked processor, so you can overclock it, that sort of thing. We'll probably see that maybe in some gaming laptops and in mobile workstations, just like the Intel Xeon for eighth generation. When available, they'll be in the, again, the ThinkPad P series workstations, the Dell Precision higher end options, and the HP ZBook. So you won't see those in a lot of laptops. Those are still kind of more specialty. CPUs. So hopefully it makes a little bit more sense about what these three series of more commonly available CPUs are. Again, we have the 15 watt U series CPUs. We have, and those are called KB Lake R. Those have been out for several months now. We have the Intel Coffee Lake 45 watt CPUs, the H series CPUs, gaming, mobile workstations. And lastly, we have the new KB Lake G which is inside this HP Spectre X360 15 inch and also the Dell XPS 15 201, both of which we reviewed, which are kind of a happy medium in between the two in terms of performance. Again, in terms of performance, probably most people are gonna be fine with Ultrabooks, but if you are doing CAD, if you're doing 3D, if you're doing video editing, if you're doing gaming, obviously it's gonna be the 45 watt, usually bigger bodied laptops for you. So there you have it. Hopefully that demystified things a little bit in our five, ish i know a little bit more minutes on tech i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more useful and cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid